my name is Claudia Rivera Salas. I'm a rheumatology nurse practitioner at Pine Hollow Partners in East Lansing, Michigan. And today we're going to talk about how to choose between steroid sparing agents and when one is indicated for the treatment of polymyalgia rheumatica. So typically, if a patient has mild to moderate polymyalgia rheumatica and wants a low cost option, tolerates oral or weekly subcutaneous medication and has no significant liver disease or severe renal impairment, we tend to use methotrexate. Typical dose in the child is around 15 milligrams of methotrexate per week. If the patient has moderate to severe polymyalgia rheumatica and needs faster reduction in steroid dose, has relapsing disease despite steroids, or cannot tolerate methotrexate, we tend to use the only FDA-approved biologic, which is Cerilimab or Kazara. So I will say as far as methotrexate, there are several side effects that I will say a lot of my patients do not tend to tolerate very well. So with methotrexate, the things that we tend to see might be some GI upset, vomiting, nausea, diarrhea, fatigue, hepatotoxicity, cytokinias, hair loss, flu-like symptoms. We wouldn't want to use methotrexate in patients with liver disease, alcohol use, fatty liver, severe renal impairment. For a patient that would be on Kevzara, we would want to monitor these patients for neutropenia, thrombocytopenia. There is some associated liver enzyme elevations at times and lipid abnormalities. Other additional considerations between these two is the cost. So methotrexate is inexpensive. Kevzara or Cerilimab is a biologic which is more expensive and typically you need to have approval by the insurance. Onset of action. So Cerilimab or Kevzara typically works faster compared to methotrexate. So what does the data say? So there was a Sapphire study. So there was 118 patients with polymyalgia rheumatica that were unable to taper steroids, seven and a half milligrams of prednisone or more, had a history of being on 10 or more milligrams of prednisone for more than eight weeks, and history of flaring, were randomized to placebo with 52-week prednisone taper or cerilimab with a 14-week prednisone taper. So by week 12, 47% of patients on cerilimab reached clinical remission compared to 38% in placebo. At week 52, sustained remission occurred in 28% in the Cerilli Med group and 10% in the placebo group. Also, the proportion of patients with no signs or symptoms of polymyalgia rheumatica was 57 in the Cerilli Med group and 49 in the placebo group at week 16. So keep in mind that in the Cerilli Med group that they had faster prednisone taper compared to the placebo. So by week 52, median cumulative glucocorticoid dose was 777 milligrams prednisone in the Cerilli Med group compared to 2,044 milligrams in the placebo group. There was also a study comparing methotrexate to cerilimab in patients with polymyalgia rheumatica. Overall, the data showed that 50% of patients on cerilimab were able to discontinue prednisone in 129 days on average, compared to 50% of patients on methotrexate were able to continue prednisone in 188 days. So this is two months less of steroids, which is significantly lower. Of course, less steroid use, less risk of osteoporosis, diabetes, obesity, vascular necrosis, a lot of other bad things that can happen with steroids. For more information, please visit the RAP website. Thank you.